Hi everyone, it's Saturday, Faith and Fun, and today we're going to talk about St. Faustina and Divine Mercy Sunday. There's so much I could tell you, but uh, we're going to try and keep it to a really short uh, discussion of what it is and what it means, and then get down to um, the picture, the painting, and um, what we feel about creating art. In 1934, the Divine Mercy painting was painted by Eugene Kazimierowski. Uh, it was actually uh, in Vilnius, Poland. Um, at the time, that's where St. Faustina was a sister and um, where she had been writing down all of the things that um, Jesus had said or when he appeared to her, she uh, wrote down this diary and more a little bit about that later, but also that this painting um, has survived a really long time and moved from church to church. Uh, St. Faustina had to tell this um, artist uh, what Jesus looked like. And that can be very hard for us, like how can you describe God? So I always think of like the transfiguration and when um, Jesus appeared in his glorified body to Peter, James, and John, and Elijah and Moses stood next to him, that it was like a blinding light and um, they fell to their knees. And here, uh, this vision of Jesus for Faustina is, um, is a conversation. He's a person to her. I think Faustina was told to paint this picture and um, she didn't know how to paint. She wasn't very good at it. So uh, later on, she gets help. So St. Faustina had to describe what Jesus looked like. Um, she had these visions and conversations with Jesus, and um, he wanted her to give everyone this message of divine mercy. He talked to her a lot about mercy. Uh, so Jesus told her to write everything down and to paint this picture. I'll give you a couple quotes later of what she wrote and um, tell everyone what he said. So the only problem is that she only went to school for a couple of years and um, she wasn't a very good painter. So she had help. She told her spiritual director, Father Sapochko, um, about what Jesus told her to do. And um, he wasn't too sure that, uh, that it was real. Um, I was thinking about how similar that story is, even for the readings that we have tomorrow about Doubting Thomas, um, that when they were in the upper room and, and Thomas wasn't there, he, um, he didn't believe them that Jesus had appeared to them, had come into the room that was locked and all of that. Um, and he said, I won't believe it until I see it. That I feel like, you know, Father Sapochko was in a similar position. Someone told him that um, they had seen Jesus and he was like, that's kind of impossible. Um, but he ended up um, believing her and helping her and he found her, Eugene Kazimierowski, to help her paint it. So um, it was hard. She was never like really satisfied with how he was painting Jesus. Um, how would you describe God? If you had seen him, what would you what would you say or how would you paint him? Because that's really like a, a hard thing to imagine, especially if we're not really good at drawing. Um, if you had a vision, it's hard to describe things that have happened in your life or the um, expression on someone's face. How would you capture it? So, um, and how would you capture that he, this was divine, like this is God on paper? So we'll talk a little bit about that later um, for the painting. But the painting was moved several times to different churches. It um, was a little damaged. It was restored. It, somebody had even tried to fix it by painting on it, but they fixed it. And, um, and it's now in Vilnius, which is now in Lithuania not Poland. It used to be Poland at the time that she was there. A man named Karol Wojtyła um, in Poland had a strong devotion to St. Faustina and this Divine Mercy painting. Um, so he became Archbishop of Krakow, uh, where um, Sister was at the time um, that she died. And um, then he became Cardinal, and then he became Pope John Paul II. And the, the interesting thing is that he, um, he beatified her in 1993, so she was on her way to become a saint. And then in 2000, she was canonized by him. Um, he canonized a lot of saints because he thought we should have, uh, everyone should have a saint that they could talk to or relate to. So uh, this was very uh, interesting for a number of reasons because not only did uh, Pope 
St. John Paul II um, canonize her. And he started uh, the Feast of Divine Mercy so that the entire church would celebrate God's love and mercy the Sunday after Easter, which is really appropriate if you think about it. But tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of the feast day of when he instituted that day. Jesus said, I desire the feast of mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls. Mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to uh, my mercy. So Jesus was saying, my mercy is amazing. It's huge. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the uh, One of the other things I wanted to tell you about was uh, a blog I, I read about a girl named Jessica. She was going to school in Rome and what she thought about mercy. And mercy, she said, is radical. It's a complete and utter gift. It's a radical love. Um, so it's bigger than we can imagine. Um, that. Uh, at one time, she had this spiritual experience, this experience of God's love, and it was so great that it crashed over her like an ocean. And one of um, St. Faustina's messages from Jesus was about the ocean of mercy. So I have a couple of quotes about what he said about it, um, but keep that in mind because um, that's one of the themes that I think is uh, so important about divine mercy. Um, Jesus said mercy is not always, or Jessica, she said that mercy is not always a peaceful thing. Sometimes you're in that ocean, it's like an ocean, it has these waves. And I was thinking like somehow we have to ride the waves, but Jesus is with us in this ocean of mercy. Um, so mercy is about hope, forgiveness, um, and, and God's love. Uh, here's two more quotes um, about what Jesus said to uh, Faustina. My daughter, be diligent in writing down every sentence I tell you concerning my mercy, because this is meant for a great number of souls who will profit from it. So be, be uh, persevering, be constant about this, don't give up. And I thought about our virtue of patience and waiting and um, not giving up as we try to build virtues. So it kind of connected that for me too, um, as we talked about that this week. My daughter, do you think you have written enough about my mercy? Like, don't, don't stop now. Uh, write down to everything I'm telling you, and there was a lot. It's a pretty, um, pretty big book of writings that she has. What you have written is but a drop compared to the ocean. Uh, I am love and mercy itself. So he was saying that even that that uh, a huge diary that she wrote, all of the words that she wrote, all of the ways that she tried to um, remember everything that he said and write it down and and all of that is just a drop of the amount of mercy and love that God has for us, that he has. So he says there is no misery that could be a match for my mercy. Neither will misery exhaust it because it is being granted. Um, as it's being granted, this mercy, it increases. The soul that trusts in my mercy is most fortunate because I myself take care of it. So uh, Jesus' message to us was uh, no matter how bad it is right now, no matter what you're suffering, his ocean of mercy is greater than anything else. So when you think about that ocean, that um, reminded me of, you know, like if you go on vacation or maybe you've seen it on TV, you can't see the other end of the ocean. You can't um, maybe see the sides even. It's so huge. And if you wanted to go into the water, you probably couldn't even touch the bottom. It's so big that God's love and mercy is so huge. And Jesus even compared it to the ocean. So you would know you had some way to try and understand. So uh, this idea of the ocean and how great it was reminded me of a story uh, about St. Augustine. So St. Augustine um, t was walking down the seashore and um, he comes upon this boy, a child, um, playing in the sand, he's thinking, you know, and um, asks him what he's doing. And this child says, you know, like he's trying to empty the sea into this hole. He's trying to fill this hole. And uh, St. Augustine's like, that's not going to work. You know, the sea is huge. It's so big. Um, you would never be able to fill all that, put all of that water into this hole. And... Um, 
the, the way that the story goes is that St. Augustine uh, realizes that um, God's trying to tell him something. Uh, and there's even uh, speculation in the story about whether that was an angel appearing to him to try and answer a question he had, or whether it was actually the child Jesus appearing to him. But the thing that he was thinking about on that seashore was about the Holy Trinity. He was trying to understand God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. How great that was and um, really grasp how big it was because God's so big. Like how could this actually be that um, God is in three persons but um, but one? And um, then he sees this child and the child is saying, you know, this ocean is so huge and he's trying to put it in this little hole and how difficult that could be. So um, God's trying to tell him that um, you, you may not be able to grasp it all. Like God is so much bigger. He's as big as that sea. And um, we're, we may not be able to uh, take that little bit of water is all we can handle or all we can understand about God. And, and we need to just trust in him. So I thought that was a fun story. So if you've ever been to the ocean and you saw all the how big it was, or maybe you saw it on TV and you can't even see the other end of it and you couldn't go down into the water and maybe even touch the bottom, um, you uh, realize that God's love and his mercy is so great. Um, so that's a really cool story, I think, as a tie-in. One of the things that um, St. Augustine is known for is a shell because of the story. Um, so saints often have symbols with them. So going back to this ocean of mercy, um, I wanted to tell you also that uh, to think about mercy as we've been talking about virtues or whatever, this idea of patience and forgiveness and love, that God's mercy is quite perfect, but we're supposed to be trying to be like him. So to keep in mind that um, grace, this gift that we're given, this gift of mercy, uh, it, it is gratitude and we want to be grateful. We want to thank God for that. and. Um, do that in the way that we live. We're talking about Easter right now and Easter joy. So we're living a resurrection kind of life. We know that um, God is good and he has saved us and we need to keep that in mind. So remember that even if you make mistakes, God's mercy is way bigger than you. It's as big as an ocean. All right, so now we're gonna go to the painting and uh, talk about all of those images and what's in the painting to give you um, a close-up kind of of the image that I have, the print that I have from the Marians of the Immaculate Conception. And um, you could get a free print from them if you wanted to print it in the email that I sent, the flock note that I sent to the parish. Uh, but you can also go to their website, so the information is there. I wanted you to look at the image and um, elements of it in my painting, because I feel like uh, we go to print things and they're not quite the same and um, the Marians of the Immaculate Conception worked really hard to get a copy, a photo of the actual painting in Vilnius in Lithuania. So they were able to do that and they make these prints and they try to make it as affordable as they can for everyone to have it because we wanted to have one Divine Mercy picture and um, in everyone's house like he wanted everyone to know Jesus did and they're carrying on that tradition uh, that Jesus wanted everyone to know about his divine mercy so you could see some elements of the picture here um, that this print does have a little bit of a shine and glare to it um, from the lights or whatever but you can see in the picture that there is a very dark background and that dark background, um, you may think, is just black, but it's not really just black. Even um, in Jesus' uh, halo, you could see that there are more than um, black inside the background, the colors that are in this painting. Artists often use um, different colors as uh, layers of color, like Rembrandt and famous um, portrait painters in order to get that deep depth of a background. So when we talk about this um, image, the dark background is supposed to remind us that the world is in darkness without Jesus. 
and that Jesus is light in the darkness. So you can even see that his face is glowing and his hand is glowing. Um, his right hand he's holding up in the position of a blessing. And you could see that it's sort of golden. He's got highlights in his hair. He has the light coming from his robe um, of the rays of mercy that are red and uh, white. He, um, you could see in the rays, when you look up close, they're golden in the picture. So it's not just white, but um, it's illuminating along with even the red ones. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about each of those elements as we get into um, our little coloring page that we did. But you could see here a number of things. One more thing that I want to mention um, before I sh go on to the coloring page or whatever is that one of the, uh, I really like this part about it, that Jesus' feet look like they're coming toward you. And... Um, He's actually not waiting, like he's coming to help. Uh, there are a number of elements in the picture that um, help us to understand Jesus and um, who he is and how much uh, he loves us and how great his mercy is. So we'll talk a little bit more about it, but I wanted you to focus on the areas of light and um, how we could try to portray that in our own picture. If you looked at um, the coloring pages that I posted, uh, on the Faith uh, Formation Facebook page, you would have seen uh, this one is from the Divine Mercy Organization. So um, this is the one that they would show you um, they had created. And then I was like, well, I like it, but I'm, I'm not as convinced that... <laughs> that it, it looks like him so much. So for me, it was like, I wanted to like redo it. So if you could put them next to each other, yeah, it sort of looks like him. If you were to draw him freehand, maybe, um, maybe it wouldn't come out as exactly like his face. And I noticed like he has a longer face and I wanted um, it to look a little more like him. So what I did was I created another page. So then I did one that was like, in ink, I tried to trace over the picture and um, capture all of the folds inside his um, sleeves and where would those dark pieces be and see what I could do with it. So this is an ink drawing. If I used a marker, it would have been um, too fat unless you use professional like um, artist markers. It would, create, it would create too fat of a line and you couldn't do all of those details. Um, so then I perfected my drawing as much as I could. And then if you could see this one, um, this is the blue version. And like I talked about before, the reason that I like the blue version is that, um, you can cover, uh, this color fairly easily with other colors. So, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how you could do that. So it might be difficult for you to see. Um, but I did uh, create some coloring by just drawing around the edge for his hair and um, tried to like outline it. And so I did that with, um, with the other colors. I didn't use like black this time because I didn't necessarily want a black outline like a marker. You could do it in pen and ink like I was doing the other one. But I thought I would show you... Um, different ways that you could do it. And mine is definitely not perfect, a perfect drawing. The other thing that I did that was a little different, and you might be able to tell uh, more in the one that I colored sort of with um, colored pencils, was that I made this opening look a little bit more like a heart. In the, um, in the other uh, coloring page, it kind of just looked like an opening, and I thought, their coloring page had those lines that made it um, look like those rays were coming from there. But um, I thought it would remind me that this is his heart, that it's all about love and mercy. So, um, so I made it look a little bit more like a heart. You could do other kinds of artwork that would uh, maybe depict it in different ways. I've seen a lot of artists do different things. So I wanted to show you that, and even this one, which is um, a Fun Facts page, and I love these. These are from 
uh, catholic.org and uh, they do different saint pages that you could print so this is their uh, cartoon drawing of Jesus and divine mercy and this one does show something that I have read in other places too that um, he almost appears to be lifting or rising or something um, that they talk about that in the Shroud of Turin too um, anyway this is St. Faustina their picture of her so you could make your own drawing and make your own uh, Jesus it doesn't have to be perfect but the, uh, uh, um, the elements are still there. The hand raised like he would bless. The uh, fingers like they're opening the robe to, to show you his mercy. And those rays are coming out. Um, his love is showing. So I'm not going to do a ton of coloring. and Because um, I already talked so much about the picture. About what you could do. But I wanted to show you my um, very simple, humble um, coloring that I did with colored pencils and I just wanted you to see that as I colored the hair um, I put in those elements of light that you see in the painting I tried to put yellow in there to give the impression of um, the light on him or coming from him emanating from him and the other thing was that when you um, look at the colors inside the painting there's red in here, purple, black, gray. There's these golden colors of red and orange. It wasn't like pure red or even the, um, the rays that are coming down the side have this uh, red and golden tone to them. That, um, that's what I wanted to show in my picture when I did my coloring. One of the things that they talked about in the painting also was they called this the signature. And so you're supposed to sign that you, <laughs> Jesus, I trust in you. You're saying that too. So I didn't put that in my coloring page because I want you to write it. So when you're um, coloring, you might want to, I'm using, you know, basic Crayola pencils here. I'd really love to try it in a watercolor or something, but I don't know that everyone has that at home. And that would be a longer um, tutorial. But to look at these elements and to put in the shadows and how could you make the shadows. And um, another thing, for, as a painter, um, this black background is never actually black. Um, it's usually a combination of layering of colors, if you look at Rembrandt and other famous artists. So this painting, this background would have been browns and and uh, reds and different things that would have all built up to make this dark background. So I think that you should give it a try, see what you can do, um, and think about all of those elements that are, um, that are in there. The uh, pictures are on the website, they were in the email, you've got some coloring pages, so if you want to try and actually draw, learn how to draw Jesus' face or uh, make a nose or the eyes um, you could do that with this blue printout or you could just stick with you know the coloring page that we received from divinemercy.org um, the other packet that I was going to send everyone or put on the website the pages was different pictures of Helena Kowalska when she before um, St. Faustina was a saint when she was little the jobs that she did. She even worked as cleaning houses um, that she helped her family. One time she was at a dance with her sister and Jesus appeared to her and said, why do you keep putting me off? You know that I want you um, to follow me but to become a sister. And um, she was very surprised. And then this other one um, that, this is from Holy Heroes, this packet of stuff. They have a lot of things. So if you ever wanna check out their website, this coloring page talks about how she was in the convent and she was the gatekeeper so she would like open the door and one day a, a hungry man came to the gate and she hurried up and got him soup and then when he finished the soup he revealed that he was Jesus um, that her compassion for the poor and her obedience uh, was very pleasing to him and that's why he came down to meet with her um, that about his mercy so 
There are a lot of things that you could do, ways that you can uh, learn more about this saint. Um, and just to remember uh, to say, Jesus, I trust in you. And remember, God's love, his mercy, is greater than the ocean. So I wanted to give you an idea of uh, what some of the things might have looked like in Poland for St. Faustina. So you can see here her church. There is an image um, now of divine mercy in the church where she grew up. Um, this is where she received baptism and first reconciliation and first communion. And um, you can see this sanctuary, it says, um, sanctuary of mercy. Um, this is a picture, um, a painting of Our, Our Lady of Częstochowa, and you will find them everywhere um, there. And that has its own story that I could do another time maybe, but um, I found it interesting that I found out that in some of the churches, they even change the um, tops of this. So, so by the holiday, they might have like different clothing on uh, the Madonna and the child Jesus, which I think is really interesting. But I got to see one, um, one in her church also. One of the other things that in the church is a relic. So um, that is something that we have of St. Faustina. And this is her confessional. So this side altar on the back left, you could go um, through there and even go outside from there. So you could come in from outside um, to go to confession too. Um, but this was the little box. And I thought that that was uh, really interesting to see uh, what her confessional would look like. Here you can see um, the convent of the sisters, the order that she started, and some of the stained glass from the Shrine of Divine Mercy that is there. And uh, one of the things that I thought was really uh, interesting as far as artwork, um, not only is there a statue here of St. Faustina in, in their church, um, but they also have like a round um, globe like tabernacle and the world is up here because um, Jesus died for all of us and uh, wanted to save the entire world. And he wants the entire world to know about his great divine mercy. And you can even see how big the oceans are in the water when we talk about oceans of mercy. So I thought I'd give you a little look about. And then lastly, we're gonna just talk a little bit about her home. So you could see her house is not that big here. Uh, but it is like a museum. So we got to walk in there and see some of the things that are there, um, tables and chairs and um, this small and modest home. She came from humble beginnings. And the picture of, of the infant of Prague that's hanging on the wall um, in, in Polish tradition, a lot of us, when we get married, we get an infant of Prague statue. Um, so I actually have one of those myself um, because I'm Polish, part Polish. Lastly, I just, just wanted to show you the group of us that went and the sisters um, actually in her backyard in the home of St. Faustina, uh, her family. You, you can go in the backyard and the sisters will tell you about the history of the home and how it's taken care of. And they still have relatives living like on the other side of the property line. So like on the other side of the street is still their family. So I thought that gave you a kind of a little clue of what it might look like there.